BMAT Maths isn't easy. That's why I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Faraz, I'm a Cambridge undergraduate. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys exactly how to ace BMAT Section 2 Maths from someone who scored an 8.6 in BMAT Section 2. First of all, what does BMAT Section 2 Maths consist of? You're going to have six questions and you're going to have about one minute per question. And you have a variety of different question types. You're going to have algebra questions, shape questions, graph questions, etc. Technically, they're allowed to ask you anything from the BMAT section to assume knowledge guide. It's based loosely on GCSE syllabuses, but questions can really vary in difficulty. In my own personal opinion, and what I've found when I'm tutoring students, is BMAT section 2 maths is definitely the hardest part of section 2. And for some reason, it seems to keep getting harder. So my first tip for doing well in BMAT section 2 maths is working in fractions as much as possible. This will really help you speed up your calculations, and it's going to allow you to avoid unnecessary things such as long division where you can really end up wasting a lot of time and not even getting the correct answer. So for example, between the numerator and denominator of a fraction, you want to look for factors of 2 and factors of 10. So let's say for example you have the fraction 0.17 over 34. What you should notice is that 17 is half of 34 and that if you multiply 0.17 by 200, you're going to get 34. So therefore, this fraction is going to go to 1 over 200. Working in fractions can first of all make these things way easier to spot, and it can really help speed up your calculations. Definitely use fractions as much as possible, because this can save you precious seconds in BMAT Section 2 Maths. Now, my second tip for doing well at BMAT Section 2 Maths is avoiding unnecessary working and calculations by using your answer options as a guide. A lot of the time, the answer options can first of all tell you what ballpark you're working in, second of all tell you what form they want the answer in. So for example, in shape questions, a lot of the time, the answer options will be in terms of pi. So this allows you to know, okay, I should just leave the pi in there, I should approximate pi to 3.14. This saves you doing unnecessary steps and also allows you to guesstimate answers. One quick example is let's say you're doing 8 subtract 2 and 3 fifths. If one of the answer options is slightly below 6, that's probably going to be the correct answer option just because you can guess them it. You're subtracting 2 and a bit from 8, that's going to be roughly 5 point something. Instead of actually calculating it, you use a guesstimate from the answer options, and this is a way quicker way of doing BMAT Section 2 maths. If you guys want to learn the techniques that I use to score an 8.6, check out sigmamed.co.uk. Me and my friend Hamza have put together a BMAT course that teaches you the content, exam technique, and goes through the 2022 Section 1 and Section 2 papers, which we're in the process of putting up onto the course as well. This course costs just £30. It is a real investment into your BMAT preparation, I personally recommend this to each and every student sitting in the BMAT this year, links in the description below. My third tip for doing well in BMAT Section 2 Maths is getting good with thirds. So thirds is when you have square roots of a number that can't be square rooted. And I've increasingly noticed in BMAT past papers that answer options first of all are given in terms of thirds and you have to deal with thirds in the question. So I would definitely recommend practicing the process of rationalizing the third. And how you do this is you multiply both the numerator and denominator of the fraction you're working with by the third part of the denominator. And this will get rid of the third on the bottom and give you a nicer looking answer. Tip number four for doing well at BMAT Section 2 Maths is having a sound understanding and memory of the basics. So this includes things like key formulae, the properties of shapes, so for example finding the internal angle of a shape using the equation I have up on screen right now, and also general values of sine, cosine and tan for the angles that they mention in the BMAT Section 2 Assume Knowledge Guide. These can be derived from the two triangles I have up on screen right now. I personally learned these triangles instead of memorizing the values as I found this a lot more time efficient. Now we're going to go over a worked example from the 2021 paper of a BMAT maths question. Centimeters squared. Okay. The length of PR is 8 centimeters, cos theta is 3 over 4. What is the length of QR in centimeters? Let's call QR x. So let's start off by saying that half AB sine theta is equal to area. So that's the formula you know from GCSE, so area of a triangle formula. So if we apply that to this triangle, half times 8 times x sine theta is equal to 42. So 4x sine theta is equal to 42. 
x sine theta is equal to 42 divided by 4, which is equal to 21 over 2. Now, how do we find sine theta? So that's going to be step 2, sine theta question mark. So we have cos theta, so let's draw a right angle triangle. Call this angle theta, so remember Sokotoa, ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if cos theta is 3 over 4, this is 3, this is 4. Therefore this side, using Pythagoras, is going to be the square root of 4 squared minus 3 squared, which is the square root of 16 minus 9, which is root of 7. So sine of theta is equal to opposite of hypotenuse, remember soh. So root 7 over 4. So then step 3 is going to be simply dividing the right side by sine theta. x is going to be 21 over 2 divided by root 7 over 4, which is equal to 21 over 2 times 4, then divided by root 7, which is going to be 84 over 2 divided by root 7, which is going to be equal to 42 over root 7. Now we need to rationalize this. So you multiply both top and bottom by root 7. Now that's going to be equal to 42 root 7 over 7. We know that 42 divided by 7 is 6. So therefore, the correct answer is going to be 6 root 7, which is answer option H. As you can see, that question was quite involved. That was not an easy question. But the main thing I want you to understand is look at the flow of logic. I've neatly, neatly laid it out. And I've kept the calculation simple by working in fractions and square roots and not trying to bring in any decimals. So that's how you do this style of question. That's how you do it quickly. Make sure you have a good grasp of the formulae and make sure you always set your working out nicely. In the BMAT, it's really important to write stuff down and make use of the paper that you have. I hope you guys enjoyed that worked example. The last thing I'm going to say about BMAT Section 2 Maths is it is definitely the hardest bit of Section 2. If you think a question is going to be extremely long-winded and take you a long time, guess it, come back to it only if you have time at the end because you cannot afford to waste minutes in the BMAT. You can still score a really high score in the BMAT even without getting full marks. Definitely avoid throwing away the easy marks by wasting time on a really difficult math question that you may just never end up getting. I hope you guys find this video helpful. Check out sigmamed.co.uk and subscribe to my channel if you're doing the BMAT, applying to medicine or applying to Oxbridge. Thank you for watching.